elections. But we start the hour with a theme that's been in the news a lot this week, changing place names. Buildings at the University of Minnesota, the Bidet McCoska Lake Calhoun court ruling this week, and ongoing controversy about signs that say Fort Snelling at Bedote. Well, when should historic names be changed and who should make that decision? Representative Jamie Becker Finn joins us. She offered an amendment that passed in the State House this week, affirming Bidet McCoska as the official name of the body of water that Minneapolitans grew up calling Lake Calhoun. Here, too, Representative Jeremy Munson. He's skeptical of changing the names of historic places. Welcome to you both. Um, Representative Becker Finn, um, why the focus on the changing these place names when a lot of that energy could be used to actually help the physical problems of the day-to-day -day lives of folks in these communities? Well, I think when you have people from the community saying forward and say, coming forward and saying that this is meaningful, um, you know, it's not just changing a name. It's acknowledging that history started, um, the history of this place that we now call Minnesota started long before European settlers arrived here. And so it's more a recognition of us as indigenous people and um, our, you know, existence throughout history. Uh, and so I think it's, it's important to folks on a higher level than just changing a name. What's the harm? Well, the, the lake's been named Lake Calhoun for 180 plus years. Um, and I think Rep Representative Becker Finn's correct. We should look at the history when assessing name. And 300 years ago, there was a war at Taylor Falls between uh, the Sioux and the Dakota. And uh, the, the Sioux were actually the ones that were long before the Dakota around this lake. So you know, who gets to name the lake, I think, is an important question that we should ask. Well, the DNR has been naming lakes now for, for years, many years, quietly renaming lakes, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Should they continue to do that, or is this something that the, the legislature should wade into? Well, there, there, there actually is legislation that says the DNR can't rename a lake that's been named that more than 40 years. There's a lake named Munson Lake up in Detroit Lakes named after my great-grandfather that's been named that way for, for decades. Um, the DNR can go around and change the name of Round Lake and Mud Lake and all these other lakes to pick something maybe more, more relevant. But Lake Calhoun has a long history and an important history in, Minis in Minnesota. Um, I don't think anyone looks at Lake Calhoun and says, this is named after John C. Calhoun. Um, I mean, if, if it's really the controversy about slavery, I mean, we can look at the Dakota Indians who also had slaves on site. Well, and I think the important thing to go back to the original question is that um, it isn't settled law whether the DNR uh, can, can change the names. It's been uh, accepted for decades that the DNR does have the authority to do so and that the 40-year the requirement, if you read the statute really closely, which as an attorney, that's something that I'm going to do, um, it actually, you know, we thought it was settled law. The folks in the community who wanted to change the name of Lake Calhoun to restore the name to Bidet Makaska, they asked attorneys, what do we need to do to change the name? They were told to go through this process. They went through that process, and this is the first time uh, that an appeals court, you know, has taken it up and, and found otherwise. And so it, it's, it's, you know, it's unsettled law at this point, and, uh, you know, the DNR will be appealing the ruling, and then the, the Supreme Court gets to weigh in. Where are you on the Fort Snelly Bedote controversy? I mean, and I thought Jennifer Brooks in the Strib said it well. She said it's an addition, not a subtraction, when it comes to adding the Bedote to Fort Snelling. It is historically accurate. Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have a hard decision on on, the, on changing Fort Snelling's name. I think that that uh, Representative Becker Finn's correct. We should look at the community and ask the people of the community what they want. I think the Star Tribune had a poll of thousands of people, and 80 percent of them said they didn't want to change the name of Lake Calhoun. And the community itself, I think over. 80% of the people that live within two blocks of Lake Calhoun signed a petition saying they wanted to keep the name Lake Calhoun. Well, and I, that really, um, you know, an online poll is, is what it is. Um, you know, the, the process, the folks in the community who um, are in favor of restoring the name, uh, unprecedented levels of meetings with people in the community actually going out into the community, people who typically aren't heard from at, uh, you know, at county level meetings and park board hearings were coming forward and talking about how important it was that the name be restored. Do you worry at all that folks are going to look at this and say, well, we changed the name of the lake. What more do you want me to do? In other words, the process of correcting these problems in these communities should, maybe should start with renaming the lake. And for many, it may just end with naming the lake. We've done our part. Uh, let's move on. You know, that really isn't what I'm hearing from folks in the community. I think, um, 
it's important, you know, with the signage and, and for those of us uh, with, with, you know, native ancestors, it's, um, it's incredibly meaningful. And I don't think that anyone is under the idea that, oh, we'll change the name and move on. Um, folks in the community from all backgrounds are really enthusiastic and um, understand that there's, there's more to it than just, just the name. Local, a local control guy, I assume. Uh, what level of government should make these decisions? Well, I think the community should make the decisions. You know, and I mean, if we're going to stick with the name of Bidet, I think we should put a fountain in the middle of it. I, I mean, that's that's just inappropriate well, and disrespectful to the language. Um, and I think that you know, folks who complain that it's oh, it's it's hard to say. I mean. You represent parts of Wasika and Wadawan County, Absolutely. and those are all words that at some point you had to learn to say, and I'm sure people who um, are new to Minnesota have to learn how to say those things. And your amendment will be in the Environment uh, Conference Committee, correct? Yes, yes, it uh, passed, right. passed the House right. floor, and uh, we will bring it to Conference Committee. I'm on the Conference Committee, and we'll be discussing it there if we ever meet. We'll be, right. we'll be watching. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks.